going on guys uh, i wanted to fire up the camera and show you my latest shop project uh, which full disclosure is not my idea uh, i think i originally saw something like one of these on the junk from work youtube channel uh, way back when uh, i've since seen several different iterations and uh, configurations of this type of tool uh, but what i wanted to build was an 18 volt portable soldering station uh, just to have not only in my shop, but one that I could take uh, to job sites with me. Maybe if I had to go work on my car, you know, out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, you don't always have a readily available 110 or 220 volt power source to plug a soldering iron into. Uh, and that's where something like this can really come into handy uh, and really be convenient for you. Uh, and sometimes just not having that cable around to trip over. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've plugged in a soldering iron on a workbench or a kitchen table. Uh, stepped away to grab something and tripped over that cord, pulled the soldering iron off, you know, onto the table or onto the floor, uh, burn myself, burn the floor, burn the table. Uh, it just really turns into a mess, uh, whereas something like this uh, kind of cuts down on that probability uh, just a little bit. Uh, and the nice thing is this is really not very expensive to make. Uh, it's very quick and easy to put together. Uh, so in the interest of uh, kind of saving on some time here, in the beginning. I'm just going to jump right into how I put this together. Uh, I know there's a lot of guys that go through my videos and say I talk too much. I'm already talking too much, so uh, let's just jump right into it and I'll show you what I did to build this. So again, the only thing you really need, uh, it's real quick and easy, just two items, uh, maybe not including whatever base or how you decide to mount it, uh, but the two main ingredients are going to be your soldering station, which in this case is a Quico T12-942. It's a T12 style soldering station. Uh, you'll need that and you'll need some kind of a battery adapter, preferably 18 to 20 volts. I think it can probably run on 12 volts, uh, but I haven't tested that. And I really wouldn't recommend that because I don't think it will go much lower than that. So uh, 18 volts is recommended. Uh, if you've got a 20, that'll work fine. This will actually go up to 24 volts DC. Uh, so even if you have some batteries that are a little bit higher power than that, uh, you can get an adapter for that. Uh, and the nice thing is these adapters aren't very expensive at all. Uh, and nowadays you could probably find one for just about every major battery platform out there. Uh, this one's for an M18 like you would find for Milwaukee. Uh, you can find them for DeWalt, Hitachi, Bosch, Makita, Craftsman, you name it. Uh, sometimes they're 3D printed, sometimes they're injection molded. Uh, you know, just shop around, see what looks good to you. Uh, this one I got off of eBay. It's injection molded. It's about $13 shipped to my door. And uh, it's real basic, uh, but it really does what it needs to do. Uh, now, I did have to modify it some, uh, which is really simple. Uh, this basically comes with no holes or no mounting options in it whatsoever. Uh, I think I've seen where some do have uh, some pre-drilled holes or keyholes. Uh, for mounting some hardware to or with. Uh, this one I just drilled some pilot holes for this small style of wood or plastic screw that I have. Uh, it's got kind of a flat button head on the top. Uh, it's really short. So I drilled a pilot hole just slightly larger than the threads all the way through in the middle here, front and back. Uh, make sure obviously that you're avoiding these terminal strips as well as where the wires go in. Uh, but this is mostly hollow, mostly empty on the inside. Uh, so I drilled through top and bottom layers, uh, and then I drilled a larger hole on the top layer to accommodate that screw head size. Uh, and then I simply just drilled a pilot hole into the base where I wanted it, mounted it directly to the base, uh, and that took care of this side. Uh, now on this side, there's four screws on the front panel, four screws on the back. You could take all eight of those out, and this comes apart in four pieces. Uh, basically a front panel, back panel, and two halves like this. Uh, now the front panel may be hot glued to your bottom half. That just peels right off pretty easily. Uh, and then you can drill a hole or two into the bottom half and mount that directly to your base as well. Or even, again, directly to your adapter if you want to go that route. Uh, so once that's mounted, uh, I do recommend mounting this last. Uh, mount this first, that way you can put your bottom screws back in, get your front and back panels in place, uh, and then this can uh, bolt back together at any time.
Uh, now, as far as the wires or tying the power together, this does initially come with a little barrel jack, uh, just a standard 24 volt DC jack. Uh, I took that out. I think it's a little bit unnecessary and redundant. Also, this did not come with a power supply or the mail side that plugs into this. I'm sure I've got some around the house, but I didn't feel like looking for them. So I just cut the wires off at the jack. Uh, positive goes on the middle pin, negative on the outer pin. I uh, cut those off and just wired them directly or connected directly to the adapter. So I stuck a grommet in here just to protect the wires. Push my wires through, put some hot glue in there. Uh, not only to hold the wires a little bit better, but to protect from any dust or anything getting in there. Uh, and then I use some crimp on male and female spade connectors that are insulated uh, to connect these wires together. And you can use any number of means for connecting those uh, barrel crimps, uh, heat shrink and solder. Uh, you can use some wire nuts. Uh, you know, just make sure your connections are tight uh, and that there's nothing that might short against this board. And you probably want it a little bit on the lower profile side as well. Uh, you've got plenty of room in here, but, you know, it can get tight if you're really putting a lot in there. So uh, once that's together, again, positive goes to the switch, uh, negative goes to the board. And, uh, you know, you can just kind of keep track of which wires come from where, positive off the center, negative off the side. And those are now connected together. And that's pretty much it. Uh, two screws mount this to the base, two screws mount this to the base. Just make sure you leave room to get your finger in there for the switch if you're doing it this style like I did. Uh, now on the bottom, I did use the rubber pads that came with the soldering station just to give it a non-slip grip. And those just stick right on like stickers. Uh, and that's really all there is to that. And uh, we'll go ahead and put this case back together and turn our soldering iron on. Uh, these are number two Phillips, uh, just FYI, if you guys need to know how to get this apart. They are very tiny screws. And uh, what I like about building a station like this versus having like an all integrated or an all in one soldering iron uh, that maybe has the batteries incorporated in with the handle or the grip. Uh, you can get a little bit better control with something like this, uh, a lot more precision. It's not as bulky, not as unwieldy. Uh, and the other really nice thing is this uses an aviation style four pin jack uh, that really kind of lets you customize not only your grip or your iron handle, uh, but also the type of T12 tip. that you're using for this. And uh, I think there's probably at least a couple dozen different tips that you can choose from, from chisel tips to flat tips, square, round, conical, pointy, I mean, you name it, you could find whatever your preferred tip is. And they are direct contact, meaning they heat up instantly as soon as power is supplied. which means that you really don't have to wait any amount of time at all. Uh, just within a few seconds, you'll be at set point. So you do want to be careful when putting these screws back in. It is easy to cross thread them. Uh, they should go in very easily and readily. Uh, and again, the nice thing is the handles. Uh, this came with three or four different options of handle uh, on the eBay, eBay listing. Uh, I chose this one. Uh, I'm not sure what the... Uh, model number was, but it was the blue and the black one, and the tips just pop out just like that and plug right back in, and you're ready to go. Uh, now for turning this on, put the battery in first, turn the power on, and already we're past 100 degrees Celsius, climbing up to 200. You can see just how quickly these tips heat up much faster than a standard soldering iron, uh, which is one thing I really like about these. And again, when your tips go bad, you 
just unplug one, throw another one in, or a different style in, and you're ready to go. Uh, now, there's really not much to the UI on this or the user interface. Uh, it's just a click for a boost uh, that, in this case, adds 50 degrees right off the bat, uh, I think for about 30 seconds or so. That's all adjustable inside a menu that I'm about to show you. Uh, also, for raising and lowering set point, you just turn left or right. You know, we can go down to 200 degrees is the minimum, or I believe 480 Celsius is the maximum. And if you do put the boost in after you max out at 480, it only goes to 500. So we'll set back to 400. And then if you do a long press on the button, that goes into your menu. Uh, step one or option one is calibration. That's to whatever tip you put in here. And that's just uh, current draw ratio, I believe. Uh, auto sleep, uh, that gives you an option to set how long before it goes to sleep or before your iron cools off to a lower set point. Uh, I've got that set to two minutes. Auto power off shuts everything off, no power, uh, that's at five minutes. Boost duration, that's how long, uh, when you hit the boost, click, uh, how long you want it to be hotter, just for like a quick moment. So I've got that set only to 30 seconds. Boost degree is how much hotter you want it to boost. Uh, it's set to 50 is the default, I believe. Wake up method, uh, you can either hit the button, you can shake it or both. I'm set to both right now. Buzzer switch is whether it beeps or not. Uh, battery guard, that's to shut this off, I believe, at a low voltage threshold. So it said if it drops below 12 volts on this battery, uh, it'll protect the circuit by shutting it off. Uh, you could set that a little bit higher or a little bit lower. I'm just going to leave it at the default to 12. Firmware, that just shows you what firmware is on this version 3.2. That may change as these are made, uh, you know, throughout the months or years. Uh, and then factory reset, pretty self-explanatory. That just allows you to restore back to factory settings. So hold the long press. We'll go back to our main menu. And while I'm in that menu, this actually shuts the tip off. So we're heating right back up again. Uh, top left corner is your set point. 400 degrees Celsius in this instance. Uh, the percentage on the right corner is your current draw. So we're drawing about 40 to 60% of our amperage. Uh, this is our real time uh, tip temperature. So we're right about 400 now. Uh, down here is a nice voltage indicator for how much voltage we have left on our battery, uh, which is between 17.2 17.3. Uh, this was not a fully charged battery when I plugged it in, by the way. I think I started out before filming at about 17.4, so this is actually pretty efficient. Uh, and then on the bottom right here, we have kind of an ambient or case temp, so whatever our cold temperature is, uh, which is 36 degrees Celsius in the shop right now. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Now, I don't currently have any accommodations for holding the tip. Uh, that's why I kind of have this separate stand that I had with another soldering station I own. Uh, you know, it works just fine. Uh, if you wanted to just set the tip in between, you know, you could kind of get it out of your way for a while or just set it up on the battery. Uh, this handle stays very cool. Uh, I've got these like PEX clamps. Uh, this is for three quarters PEX. It actually will fit in the grooves on this handle and kind of clip that in place. Uh, I'm going to see if maybe I can get a smaller diameter one that will actually clip the whole thing. Uh, maybe I'll look for that next time I'm at the hardware store. Uh, and then I'll probably mount it here on top. Uh, but for now, it's really not necessary. And just using this, you know, in conjunction with that is fine. Uh, but just to show you real quick. Oh, this wire is already tinned. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, cut and strip off an end of this wire and just show you how efficient this iron is as far as soldering and tinning. And we'll try not to go much longer than this. I'm sure a lot of people have already uh, tuned out, which is fine. 
But you guys did see how quickly and easily that heated up. Now we'll just take some solder here. Heat with our chisel point. And just that quickly and easily I've tinned the end of this wire. And uh, that's ready to solder onto a board or onto another wire or do whatever I need to do with it. And uh, we're still at 17.3 volts, uh, drawing about 30% right now between 0 and 30 while this heats back up. Uh, I don't have anything to clean my tip, so I'm just going to wipe it on this shop rag. And we'll go ahead and shut that off and conserve our battery. Uh, but that's pretty much it, guys, for a portable soldering station. Again, two main ingredients there being the T12-942, running about $30 to $40. Uh, this whole thing I built for less than $50. Uh, the adapter was $13, you know, plus the $37. Uh, the only thing extra that I didn't have, which I did already have in the shop, was a grommet, some hot glue, and some screws to mount this uh, to a scrap of plastic. And uh, that's pretty much it. Got a nice portable thing. And again, I may put a belt clip on here. I can, you know, clip this and carry it on a belt if I needed. Uh, I can add a magnet for mounting, you know, like on an electrical enclosure or something. Uh, there's just lots of different options this gives you uh, having the base like this. Uh, but for now, even just being a desktop or a tabletop unit, uh, I think I prefer using this over one that I plug into the wall, you know, even if I have the room or the outlet for it. Uh, I can just take this into the house, into the kitchen, uh, into the shop, into my car, uh, toss it in a tool bag, and I'm ready to go uh, pop in an M18, and I could probably solder uh, many, many connections before I'd have to swap these out or charge the battery. So... Uh, real quick, real simple, about $50, you know, not including the battery, again, not including the grommet or some little odds and ends. Uh, about $50 on average, you should be able to build one of these. Uh, and I'll bet that it will uh, hold its own against just about anything else out there. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know it went a little bit long. Uh, to those who stayed till the end, I commend you and I thank you. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next one.